Dana and I are um, working with this Stan, our friend, um, and he's the simulation dummy. Um, have you guys worked with simulator simulation? Yeah. Okay. Um, so bear with us because we are we we haven't had a whole lot of time with him. Um, Dane is awesome at running everything. There is a delay in the change on the um, vital signs on the on the monitor. So just make sure you keep watching it as you go because our scenario might be at some point and then all of a sudden you'll see changes. Um, so I have three scenarios for you guys today, um, and basically it's teamwork. It's not one at a time. It's not you know any anything stressful. Um, you just need to work through each scenario um, and figure out what's going on. Um, anybody have any questions? Just use your equipment. He actually has lung sounds. He actually has pupil changes. You can feel he, pulses on him. You can feel pulses on him. He's breathing right now. Um, he talks. Um, kind of. So if you hear me talking, talks and then to, well, Dana talks talk through. But if he was hidden and you didn't see Dana, you wouldn't know that. <laughs> I'm just tied to him, unfortunately. Um, I don't have the code to get it to him, and he's a little bit more mobile. So we're going to have to use Stan here, which I'm kind of tied to. Either, so yeah. So he can't move. <laughs> all right. So um, the first scenario, when you guys can all just come up and. Don't be afraid of him. Um, and there, like I said, there's equipment scattered everywhere, so feel free to use it. Um, so basically, um, these are patients that are going into the ICU. However, um, if they didn't have some of these issues, you'd be receiving them in the IMU. And it's just um, basically um, our trauma nurses just are coming in. They're in this scenario, she's super busy in the trauma room. So she pretty much just gives you pearl and gives you limited information. Um, and so you guys are going to just talk your way through it with me and work, work it out. So um, the report you get from the nurse is that this is Pearl. She's 83 years old. Um, she has a history of AFib for which she takes Coumadin. Um, she tripped over her cat Fluffy and struck her left side on Fluffy's scratching post on the way down. Then she fell and hit her head and she had a positive LOC. So she's complaining of left... Um, flank pain, she has some bruising, and it, and it is tender, but her fast was negative. Um, so neuro-wise, she's awake, alert now, she's moving everything, she's still in full spine, she has a little bit of bleeding on um, CAT scan, and uh, she's got a little lack on her head that's still bleeding a little bit, but it's not bad. Uh, she's okay, her stats are 97% on room air. Um, she's still in AFib, but her rate is controlled on that, and the rest of her vital signs are stable. Um, she's NPO, she hasn't voided yet. Um, but I gotta go. Oh, and somebody called her mom, uh, her mom, her daughter, who's coming down from Riverside. But I, I gotta go. The trauma's really busy. Sorry. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and just proceed with your assessment. You do a head to toe when they come in the room, of course, mm -hmm. and you go over. So don't be afraid. Just jump in there and do what you're gonna do. Patient verbalizing. Yeah, you oh. can talk to her. Okay. Great. Right. Hi. Hi. We're gonna go ahead. <laughs> You're going to go ahead and check your airway anyway, just to make sure that you don't have any loose teeth or... Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing all right here. Okay, good. The airway's clear. And I hate this color, though. Yeah, I'm sorry. We need to wear it right now just to make sure that you're... Okay, we're talking. <laughs> 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 we do my job. It's better when they don't talk. <laughs> okay. Um, so we're going to check her, her breathing. Is her chest rising and falling? Yes. Evenly. Yep. Okay. Um, everything's symmetrical. What's her respiratory rate? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like. Yeah, 18, 19. Listen. You might want. To mm -hmm. Watch it. Listen. Yeah. Okay. Lung sounds are clear. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. She's awake, responsive. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ow. I know. Yeah. <laughs> that was her. We're gonna check her um, circulation. I need to move your chin. Oh, you are my one too. I know. <laughs> We're going to maintain your. Um, can we have someone come over here to maintain our mobile position on our head, please? Nice. Okay. We're going to check your. Um, ah, that's great. Can you just keep that off? No, ma'am. I'm sorry. We're just taking it off for just a minute here, just to make sure that you do have a pulse there. So uncomfortable. I know. Just bear with us. We're just. It's just to keep you safe. We're going to check her femoral pulse. So her pulse is strong but irregular because oh, she's wow. an AFib. I got it. Yeah. <laughs> you can really feel it. Okay. So and what's what, her color? Her color is. She's pale. Okay. Um, 
and she moist or dry? She's dry, but she's got pain on that left. Where is where is her pain? Oh. Oh, we should ask her where her pain is. Okay. Oh. When's the last time you went to the bank? Oh, there. Right. Okay, you pain is in your left side? Did you this left? This is a little higher. Okay. Yeah. Your left oh, shoulder right area? There. Okay. Uh, no, not that high. Down there. There you go. <laughs> Does it hurt when you breathe in and out? A little bit. Okay. <laughs> but it's not bad. My head hurts more. You know, so, Buffy was just right under my feet, and then I just tripped and fell over her. I hit that post, and you know, I don't remember anything after that. I would. So why is this patient in the ICU? What makes her an ICU? Uh, is she on any blood thinners? She has a history of She's not committed. Risk for bleeding. Okay. What's her INR? She does have a good question. Her INR is 2.3. Oh, okay. Great. Anything else you want to know about her? We're just going to apply more pressure to her. Her lab. fast was cleared. Um, what's her H and H? Good question. Your credit is 34. What's the worst thing that could happen to this patient? Um, she could have she head bleed. Too. Yeah. She could really bleed, right? What else could happen to her? She could have had um, something that wasn't found on the fast, like a cracked rib, and so she'd be at risk for a, a pneumo. Great. A pneumo mm -hmm. And she's reporting the pain, so that's a concern. Right. So what's your, what's your ongoing assessment um, and your problem focus going to include for this lady? Neuro uh, neuro yeah. Neuro um, so what are you going to do for bleeding? What are you going to check? We need to check her head laceration, but we need to make sure that she doesn't have any internal bleeding in her, like a new yeah. Check her pupil. Yeah. Labs. Great. Labs are, labs are great. great. Okay. So, um, we 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 tacky there. Change in her. So Pearl's becoming tachycardic and, and her ooh. blood pressure just dropped. Yeah, she's all right. hypotensive. Uh, what are we going to do no, about this? Sad. We need to make sure that she's got two IV yeah. lines running. <laughs> Put some Because she's down. probably going to be going to surgery. Yes, with TNC. And, and what size <laughs> are they? <laughs> with warm some large bore and we need to give her <laughs> some uh, warmed crystalloids. Great. Good. Fluid. Oh, kind of oh. So what would another choice be? Um, Feeling a little dizzy? I'm going to put a little bit of oxygen on you Good. right here. Yeah. What else would we she consider? She should actually have a non-regrader, but <laughs> that's right. Well, the stack's 95, but if it was really cool. yeah. it's supposed to be low. She's a trauma patient. That's good. A little oxygen, 95. Right. That's good. So, what you wanted to give? You said fluids for hypotension, right? Mm -hmm. And you're going to need. What else? You're going to be calling the doctor. We're going to page the doctor, let them know the vital sign changes. We're yeah. going to check for the current lab values. So, so call it so like oxygen. Yeah. Make sure that fluids are going. Slept we have two co patients. So, so I'll be the doctor. And you call me. And use S bar. Use S bar. Okay. Do you want to do this, primary nurse? No, I, I, I did it up. <laughs> you guys can do it together. You guys can all yell okay, at me. Okay, so I'll we have the subject, the background, assessment, recommendation. Okay, so what's the situation? <laughs> so what's the situation? What's the situation? situation over there? This is so, Mike. So, do, <laughs> so it up all night. So, doctor intern, um, this is Alexis from the IMU, and mm -hmm. uh, uh -huh. I just noticed that the patient's blood pressure um, dropped. Recently, this, what was it, 70s over? Wait, 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 what did what, what, she come in with? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize you weren't familiar with this patient. She came in, she was a fall, um, she, on Coumadin, her INR was 2.3. Mm. Um, did FFP? Her no, she no. didn't. All right, let's order two units of FFP. Okay. Um, do you want me to tell you everything else about the patient? Yeah, real yeah, quick? yeah, all right. <laughs> so, um, heart rate's 130s, BP 70s, 79 over 46. Um, she's still mm -hmm. satting um, 95, but we just put her on some, two liters nasal cannula. Um, she's reporting left-sided um, uh, flank, uh, flank pain, and she's also stating that it's <laughs> up and around her ribs um, anteriorly. Did she go to CT scan of that abdomen? Um, it's pending. Okay. Uh, well, we killed two birds with one stone, you know, reversing their INR and giving her those fluids. So, uh, anything else you need? Um, no, I can just uh, keep you posted. I'll page you if I notice. Yeah, oh, yeah. Only if, order in, right? only if you. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> only page me if it's an emergency, okay? I'm kind of busy. All right, bye. bye. <laughs> <laughs> I love my phone. <laughs> I know. I wish I had a banana. <laughs> <laughs> you need that sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> you do that with such attitude. <laughs> okay, so you gave her some fluid, you corrected her vital signs. And she was stable for a and while. And she is stable and she's good. And so you go to see your other patient and you just tell, hey Pearl, if you need anything, just use your call light. So you're in seeing your other patient and the call light goes off. And it's Pearl. So you come in and check her. Hello? 
Doctor again, but this time I'll call my left side. Okay. Because oh, you're ultra cool. Mike, it's Pearl again. Old lady who fell. Yep. Um, she's <laughs> having neuro changes now. Oh, she is, huh? Yeah. Like what? Um, she's having nausea, vomiting, headache, um, increased flank pain. Her stats are dropping again. Her vitals are 73 over 49. She's tachycardic. Okay, uh, can we recheck her labs, please? Thing, Mike. And uh, <laughs> you put her on oxygen? She's on an oxygen Oh, good, good. Okay, well, we'll just keep an eye on her. She's having like increased work. <laughs> 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 no. That's what they say. <laughs> <laughs> Attending. <laughs> 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 Can we have a new doctor? <laughs> uh, I, gotta, I gotta go. I got a situation I gotta take care of. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have a situation here. We're gonna do rapid response. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, actually, she's uh, she's slowly on her way back to being stable, <laughs> according to our scenario. Mm. Mm. So we put her on some oxygen. Yeah. So she's someone to watch. Okay. So um, after we do simulation little uh, skits like this, you always do a little debriefing. Um, so her mechanism of, mechanism of um, action was the fall in Coumadin. So. Um, there's a, there is a criteria that the doctors follow for when to give FFP and when, when not to, but it actually, um, it kind of varies. And so... Um, Pretty much like her, if she has a head bleed, we always try to reverse and get their INR less than 1.5. So that's always our goal. So if you get a patient with an INR of 2.3, the first thing that should come out of your mouth is doing plan on reversing her, especially if she has a head bleed. If she doesn't have a head bleed, if she has an LOC, they may go ahead and reverse her, get her around 1.5, but if she doesn't have a loss of consciousness and is uncommitted, they just may watch her. But those are the ones that you kind of get scared about, yeah, because, you know. You know, and your choice of fluids in somebody like this, she's 83, she has a fib, so you're thinking, ooh, we gotta, we, we gotta be a little careful. So while you're waiting, when she's hypotensive, while you're waiting for that FFP, yeah, you can strip some fluids, but you really want to get that FFP. That would be your, your fluid of choice. Yeah. Um, okay. And um, after patients get their FFP, you always have to recheck their labs, and I'm sure you guys know like that, and we do that. Um, the other thing with somebody that's on Coumadin is, you know, she was complaining like of a headache, and then this she could have had a secondary injury here. So keep, keeping your eye on that and not uh, disregarding that is really important as well. Um, so SBAR, um, we, are, we admittedly in the SICU are not good at doing it. Um, I failed. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right, we, had, I, we honestly had to look it up again before, we, before this, just to remind. Um, but it actually, the more we're doing these scenarios and things, it is actually a, a, the best way to call the doctor and to get things done effectively. Yeah, yeah, yeah it really is. I hate the long stories just to get to the point. And right? especially, the, you know, the residents are <laughs> on the other side of the phone tapping their foot and doing whatever because <laughs> they don't want the long story. They just want to know what you need and what's going on. Um, and don't be afraid to ask questions to the trauma nurses. Even if they're uh, already, they know they run and they, Drop, drop them off too and they're running up because they're busy and you're missing something, use your flow sheet. But if you can't find the information and it's pertinent information, call us. You know, we try not to miss the important stuff. We may not give you the little details about a lot, a little cut or something, but um, 
definitely don't hesitate to call us. But I thought that was a good number. point that you made about a rapid response too. I mean, that this is like a perfect patient. Absolutely. You really would call a rapid response. Yeah. So in, yes, in the INU, you would call a rapid response on this patient, but you would still be thinking the same stuff. Exactly. You know, we are. It's all the same. And just, just remember, we always, you know, for someone like this, we may do a fast, and we do have docs that are doing that. We just didn't have the attendings now doing the fast on the road. They haven't been doing it for all that long, maybe six months to a year. So depending on how many fasts they do, you know, is how good they are. So, you know, just think of that. Um, during the daytime, we have the ultrasonographer actually come out and do a complete ultrasound on them. But um, during the nighttime, or sometimes, it, depending on what attending they are, just because they want the practice there, they may be the ones doing the mass. So How fast do you get the fast results? <laughs> Instantly. They can yeah. tell you right there. There is fluid. There's no fluid. Yeah. That's basically what they're looking for. Right. And that would buy them a ticket to either a CAT scan again to evaluate further, or if they feel it's significant enough to Yeah, the problem with the VAS is that you can't tell what fluid it is. So like a lot of our patients that come in with ascites, there's fluid around the liver, so you don't know if it's a liver injury or not. And so those are, anytime there's any question with a VAS, we'll bring them down to CAT scan. And like for this lady, later on, we've already done the fast, which was negative, but if something goes on where she looks like there's maybe something going on the belly, we'll probably just take her down to CAT scan. And that's just because CAT scan nowadays is so much quicker than it used to be. Yeah, and when I first started here, it took an hour and a half to do a, an abdominal CT. It was forever. So, any questions on that scenario? That was really good. Okay, All moving right. on to scenario number two. So this is Rocky. Pearl turned into a man. Yes. And uh, Rocky is a 35-year-old patient. He was assaulted, um, and he was admitted from the trauma room to you at five o'clock. Um, this is the day shift going on to night shift. He had a positive LOC and positive ETOH. He has a small temporal parietal subdural hematoma on CAT scan. So neuro-wise, he's about 15, 14, 15 GCS, still a little drunk, moving all extremities. Um, he's in C-spine precautions only. Um, his uh, eyes are pearl at 3, and he needs a repeat CT at 10 o'clock tonight. Um, respiratory wise, he's 95% on room air. He keeps taking off his O2, but he's still pretty good on 95%. I mean, on room air. Uh, vital signs are stable. He's NPO, but he's really not happy about that. Um, he voided once in the trauma room. He has a lot of bruising on his face and a hematoma to the right scalp, um, but it hasn't changed much. His labs are all fine. Um, his girlfriend's been in and out, and they got in a fight, so she left for now. Um, so why don't you proceed with your assessment? Sure. <laughs> Hi, Rocky. I'm Joe. I'll be your nurse this evening. What do you want? Could you just leave me alone? Well, hon, I'm sorry. I can't do that. I got to do a quick assessment. Are we going to change of shift, or is it just me, or should I be doing the yeah, thing you know, and going with my off-going nurse to assess the patient? That would be ideal. The exact same thing. That would be ideal. <laughs> so, Rocky, can you tell me where you are right now? In the hospital. In the hospital? Do you know which hospital you're at? I don't know. San Diego, I don't, I don't know. Okay, it's UCSD. Can you tell me the date? Um, it's Tuesday. Tuesday, how about the date? Do you know what month and what year it is? I don't know, it's February something. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you and I'll be asking you again. It's February 6th, 7th. 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 <laughs> No, unfortunately, we've got to keep that on you for just a little bit longer. So, Alexis and I, we're going to just do a real quick assessment because she's going to go home and I'm going to take over for you, okay? So, I'm going to shine this light in your eye. I know it's this annoying light. So, so I'm just going to take a real quick look. Look like uh, probably too reactive. Is that what you've got to do? Right. I, well, you know, it is. <laughs> so, right. right. Okay, right, right. There we go. Yeah, so, why is this patient in the ICU? Yes. Anybody can answer. It's a, a open. Why? Why do we have them in the ICU? Because positive LLC. And with a head bleed. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
and just making sure that um, maintaining the seat collar until it's clear right and getting the follow-up CT great oh um, maybe because he had alcohol on board we don't know his drinking history but he might be on CWA so we have to check that too great what's the problem with putting a patient with a head injury on CWA if you have to give him a lorazepam it matters, right? yeah so you're running in, yeah. So then you're going to have a, a tough neuro exam. So there, there, um, neurosurgery at first is going to really, until we get a couple hours of neuro exam, they're going to be limited on how much they give you of if anything, which kind of is hard with a drunk patient. Um, so you've done okay. it head to toe okay. pretty much, and, and he's he's stable. He's a little sleepy. His vital signs are great, and your charge nurse comes in and says. Hey, guess what, Joe? What? There's an in-service right now they have to go to, and awesome. we're serving pizza. So, oh, great. So let me, I'm hungry. Let me uh, hang out here. Why don't you okay, go eat? Okay, so Rocky, I'm just going to go ahead and turn you over to the charge nurse. going to give you the call light in case she needs to step away, okay? Which is what commonly we deal with is a head bleed and drinking mm -hmm. and, and alcohol and so this is... Yep. Yeah. So quick check. It's people's people still look okay. the same. Okay. No burst so he's, he's relaxing now. He looks okay. You need to go check your patient next door. Oh, okay. we'll Rocky's check. resting okay. here. Okay. And Rocky's good. We re oh, I should have asked for my order for restraints. And I asked you got order for restraints, and it's in the computer. Yeah, because you know we've got a, a great neurosurgery yeah. resident. And it's in your teaching and your care plan. Also. That's right. And okay, so now you come back in and do your check on him about 20 minutes later. Oh. Oh. What's going on? Wow, look at this. That can't possibly be right, Rocky. Oh, look at Rocky. Rocky has had an extreme change okay. in his neuro. So what are you going to do? I am going to first of all, I'm going to call for help. Can I get you in here real quick? My patient looks to be desatting. Let's go ahead and get some more oxygen on him. Rocky, can you answer me? Rocky? Rocky's not responding. Rocky, so open your while eyes. This, I'm going to go ahead and contact the doctor quickly. I'm also going to let um, respiratory is going to be the next. I'm going to let respiratory okay, know. Okay, respiratory is coming in. They're going to. Okay. You're, you're going to do the airway? Okay. Um, here is some suction. This is yeah. Rocky. I've had a quick good decrease in his LOC. He's hypertensive. He's tachycardic. Ring, ring. Uh, ring, ring. Ring, ring. Oh. <laughs> hello. 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 This is neurosurgery. <laughs> Hi, it's Joe. I'm calling back again about Rocky, the patient in the SICU. Yes. Rocky has had a sudden change in his condition. He's 81%. We placed him on a non-rebreather mask. 
He's breaking down into the 50s. Uh, uh, go, uh, you know, uh, 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 go he's ahead and call. Um, uh, he, he needs to be intubated. Get anesthesia there and let's get him down to CT and uh, maybe uh, some mannitol. Okay. Could you put the order in, please? Thank you. Uh, can you take a verbal? Uh, no, I cannot take a verbal. Please uh, put the order in. Thank you. All right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Respiratory. Okay. Okay, so what's your plan? What's going to go okay, on? Okay, so what we're going to do is intubate him. He's lost yes. the ability to protect okay, his airway. Okay, so airway. he's intubated and you're planning on... Okay, he's intubated. Uh, uh, we're going to go down to... We're going to start the mannitol. We're going to take him down to CT. Okay, go to CT and boom. He's off for a subdural evacuation to the OR. Poor Rocky. And he has okay. his two functioning IVs in. He's in. Yes. Good call. We call right away with, uh, with the alcohol versus uh, is he having an emergency? Yeah, like, but sometimes it's so hard because it I've had hard. patients who are alcohol patients and when they wake up, they're just nasty. So, and so they're altered anyway. I'm like, you're much nicer with them. And sometimes when you do get to give them Ativan and, and kind of, we call, I call it lose your exam. You, you lose the ability to wake your patient every hour and get an adequate neuro exam. And that's scary because you can't just ignore that. Um, even though you, you know, you're thinking it's probably he's sleeping it off. Um, so if it gets to the point where you can't obtain an accurate neuro exam, that's when you call the neurosurgeon and say, hey, I think we might need an EVD because I can't do this every hour not getting an accurate exam in the morning. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's... Yeah. They will do anything to avoid people. doing an EVD, and so don't we, but sometimes it's, it's the necessary. Um, so ventilation goals for the ICU people are uh, normal pelvic, um, and then um, always, always, always do you change your shift neuro exam with the nurse like you guys did. That was great. Um, all it takes is one time of that happening to you, and then you forget it. Um, so you don't know you're like. Well, that's not what's in the charts. Well, you know, and, 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 and like, you know, right, or you know, six o'clock you do your exam, and this guy's pupils are fine. He's sleepy, but his pupils are okay, and he's following commands. And it's seven o'clock, change of shift, change change shift comes, and then you give report at seven thirty, and by the time the nurse comes, it's eight o'clock. He does his exam, and the pupils are fixed. And then the next day, you come in to find out that that happened. And so that was a two-hour window where. Something happened. Yeah, yeah, it's hard not to feel responsible for that. So just do your on and off until you're sure when you go home that you know nothing had changed on your time. Well, it's nice too because, like I said, it's did you see what I see? Because exactly. your three and reactive might be it's my different. four. Right. Well, so you can that. It may not make a difference, but it might make a big difference. Good. Okay, one more. One more. Do you guys have any questions about that one? Yeah. Okay. So um, another pretty much drop and run. The nurse is really busy in the trauma room. She's gonna scoot this patient right to you, give you a little report. This is Junior. He's 17 years old. He was an unrestrained driver and he was struck by a garbage truck that just came out of nowhere and hit him. He slammed his chest into the steering wheel. He has a widened mediastinum noted on chest x-ray and he's awaiting to be called to IO for an aortogram. Um, he's nervous, but he's intact. He got four morphine about 15 minutes ago in CT. His mom's on the way. Um, he's been two lead, uh, two liters. He's been adding 100%, no problem. His vital signs are stable, a little bit tachycardic, no big deal. I think it's because he's nervous. Um, he's NPO and he's voiding. Um, he has bruising to the right chest, but the skin is in, intact there. Um, so proceed with your head to toe assessment. <laughs> okay. <laughs>
Wait, a wide wide medius diagonal x ray is a sign of possible aortic aortic rupture. injury, yes. So that concerns them. You can get wide medius diagonals if the patient, um, different size patient, if it's not a you know great x ray, mm -hmm. things like that. Um, but it's not something to fool around with. Whenever we get a wide medius diagonal, a true one, we investigate it, usually I have. Um, so that's the plan for junior. Uh, what's the worst thing that could happen to junior? Yeah. You could have an aortic rupture. That's the worst thing. What else could happen to junior? From the, from the mechanism you got, what else do you think could happen to him? Yeah, all, all sorts of issues. Okay. Um, okay, so junior's starting to have some labor breathing. He's grunting. He's not answering your questions anymore. Oh, God. I can't really, I can't, I can't catch my breath. Go ahead and do a non rebreather. Okay, what else are you going to do? Is he on the knee He is right now, but. You can do reverse trendle lumbar. Yep, you got a bit of reverse, but that's good. If he wasn't, you would definitely sit him up because that's the best way to breathe. It's just that his dummy's too heavy to sit up. Notify the doctor. Okay, so you want to repeat your x ray. You got him on. Um, Oh, two. What other things might you want to get to help you evaluate him? Well, what are listening to him again? Page RC. Maybe Right. So you guys, this if you were in the IMU, this would definitely be somebody you're calling a response on. Um, but even with that, what kind of what, what else would you want to know? He's having breathing problems. What other ABG? You already did lungs, you got your x-ray, ABG, perfect. You want to start getting that ABG drawn and, and, and moving forward because you know you're going to be pushing them up. What else are you thinking he might need? Fluids, Could be fluids, type and cost. Those things, the type and cost. Make sure he's got access. Make sure he's got access, great. So um, what did you hear when you listened to his lung sounds? <laughs> We're going to have to intubate Dana over there. Did you actually listen to his lung sounds? I did. Okay, go ahead and listen to him. He could have a ruptured diaphragm too. <laughs> he could. How would you know that? Uh, yeah, you can go see his chest rising and falling and make sure it's symmetrical and then also um, listen in the epigastrum. And so yeah, you might hear it, but the best way is, is uh, x-ray. Okay. You can see. You can see. Stuff up here. They can't see from there. Here is Oh, <laughs> So who's the doctor? You're the doctor. So we need an order. <laughs> there is somebody calling. <laughs> Hi, this is the intern for trauma. <laughs> What's the matter? <laughs> What's the Hi, this is uh, the junior. Um, he came in with the uh, MVC. He's having difficulty breathing now. He um, hit the steering wheel. He's got a non-rebreather. Only setting at 81. Oh god. Oh god. No chest sounds on the right side. Okay, I'll, I'll be right over. Uh, can you get me stuff for a chest tube? You know, like the We're turn. It's it's already already the okay, I'll be there. We're so good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the doctor now. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, I need some lidocaine and uh, some gloves. Let me gloves. Gloves. All right. All right. All right. Gloves on. Okay. What side did we say it was? The side. Oh, that's it. Okay. Don't touch your mouth yourself. Um. Yeah. Maybe. Do we have a chest X-ray? He has a bend to one. Recently. We had a portable chest x-ray done and it shows that there's a collapse on the right side. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. Wait, right. You just forgot right. the shake. Oh, God. Uh, is there anything wrong with this? Do you have to do it? Oh, oh, yeah, time out. Okay, so we're doing the left, no, the right side. Right side, which are all initial. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, Would you like some help setting up? Do I need anybody to come to uh, I, I've watched it plenty of times. Let's get somebody else in here who might well, be able to see. All right, uh, all right, well, all right, all right, here comes the resident. Else quick. <laughs> here comes the resident. Okay. Like, the example for that is, you know, if you have somebody that you think is unsure of any procedure, um, you can look it up in the computer, that takes too long. 
You need to just you feel too. free to ask. Hey, have you done this a lot? Are you comfortable with it? And you know, else could help you and if they say yes and you're still feeling like they're fumbling, just say I'm not comfortable. Maybe I can call somebody to help you or whatnot, and then move it on up because um, can cause these things harm. happen, and we are the patient's advocate. So. Uh, so anyway, Junior got his chest tube and he felt much better and his mom got here and he went to IR. So he's all better. Um, Good job, Junior. So, let's see. Um, so what are the signs and symptoms of a new one? Yep, do some deviation. That's the bad side. <laughs> right. So once you get into tracheal deviation, you're looking at what? Oh, once, once, once it starts to deviate over, <laughs> we change that to what? You're having heart trouble. That's that possibly. It's a tension you mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a bad sign. Right. What other signs of, are of tension you move? Vital signs. What would you see for your vital signs? Increase in heart rate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Lower increase heart rate, rate, decrease that, lower blood pressure. They try to move. Yeah. You won't get a sat anymore because you don't have any pulse pressure anymore. So, like everything right. just kind of goes here. So the thing that I think is important with this kind of patient in Pearl and, and, and with um, the bedside um, SI and IMU RNs is that, you know, in the trauma room, we do, the, like I said, the doc does the initial assessment and the nurse is writing it down. And then the nurse does her own to kind of make sure it correlates with the doc so she can kind of ask questions. And, you know, when it's busy, they are, you know, they're doing the best they can to make sure everything's stable. But there are times there, there's missed injuries. And um, so the third eyes on a patient, you know, it can't hurt. So when you get these patients, just make it a habit to do your own head to toe. It takes two seconds. Um, you know, this they gave you to him from the trauma room and he was fine, two liters, 100%, everything was great, you know? They missed that he had, you know, it may not have shown up yet or, or whatever, or it might have been just missed that he had a new one and it worsened as he was laying in front of him. Um, so, um, that's about it. Do you guys have any questions? Mm -hmm. Great job.